What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Granger Smith Podcast, episode 37. This is a good one. And today's sponsor for this podcast is Ship Station. Let me tell you a little bit about Ship Station. As folks are adapting in this changing world, this new e commerce world that we're having with shutdowns, uh, or if you're trying to get into the e commerce business, let me tell you about Ship Station. Now, if you're selling online, you're getting a lot of orders. It, it, it could get really tough. Yee Yee Apparel has always had this problem. Amber has the same problem. So how do you keep track of who gets what? Which shipping carrier should you use? Are you getting the best rates? This is, this is a nightmare. So this is why you need to go to ShipStation.com. It's the fastest, easiest, most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. Just a few clicks and you'll be managing your orders, printing out labels, getting your product to happy customers. ShipStation makes it easy. And a lot a lot of people have asked me um, how to start an apparel company, for example, and they want to know about Yee Yee Apparel. Uh, well, it, it starts with customer service, and that starts with getting the product to them. This is where ShipStation can come in handy. It doesn't matter if you're selling Amazon, Etsy, stuff off your own website. It brings all your orders into one simple interface, and it makes them really easy to manage uh, from any device, even your cell phone. And that works for me because I'm, I'm just... When it comes to this kind of stuff, I get overwhelmed and I don't want to deal with, uh, you know, all, all, all the details of shipping. That just drives me crazy. I want to sit there on my phone and just make it very simple. So this is no wonder ShipStation is the number one choice in online sellers. You're going to ship more in less time with the best rates available. And so right now, guys, everybody listening to the Granger Smith podcast, you could try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use the offer code Granger, my name, G R A N G E R. Make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of delivery culture. Get started at shipstation.com today. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Granger. That's shipstation.com, then enter the offer code Granger. Shipstation.com, make ship happen. Today's guest is going to be a really fun one. Uh, I've known Robert Oberst for um, a little bit of time now. We met at the Holler music video, as I met a lot of these guys, a lot of these big influencers. And big is an understatement when it comes to Robert. He's like 385 pounds and um, the six eight. Um, he's a big dude, but, but, but there's a lot of big guys. And what makes Robert so special is that he has taken something, uh, you, you know, his... his his drive is, it comes from much more than just his size. I mean, the, the guy uh, has competed for a long time at World's Strongest Man competitions. Um, he's been a finalist a handful of times, and uh, he's still competing to this day. In fact, he's training for 2020. And, um, and so I wanted to talk to him about what drives the strongest man in the world. And this is not just a national event. Like if you're listening to this podcast, this thing is worldwide. This guy goes out and uh, he'll, he'll travel all over the world and go to the world's strongest man competitions and win. And, uh, and that's saying something. And I, and I wanted to talk to him about, well, there's millions of big guys, you know, there's, we, everybody knows big guys. And uh, so how do you take that and, and take it to the next level? And, and decide that you want to compete at that kind of level. And, and Robert is that guy. You guys are going to like this podcast. Welcome to the Granger Smith Podcast. Yee yee. Occasionally come to me and they'll say, "Do you have any advice on being a singer? I want to be a singer. What's some advice you can give me?" And I have a little trick to that. My trick is I'll say, 
My first thing I'll tell them is, well, do you have a fallback plan? Because if things don't work out, you know, what, do you have a good option of something? And, and if they say something like, oh, actually, yeah, you know, my father-in-law has got a concrete company. That I could probably come in as manager. Then they failed the test. Right, right. Because the only answer in my business is, there's no fallback plan, man. I, it's just, this is just what I do. Yeah, no parachute, man. You got to learn to fly. And I thought about you <laughs> because it's got to be the same. At your level, there's no fallback plan. No, that's literally what I tell people all the time. Uh, when, when I got into Strongman, uh, everyone was telling me, you can't make money, you can't make money, you can't make money. And I said, oh, yeah, well, I'll show you how you make money. Yeah. And it was the same exact thing. I, I tell people all the time, if you have a, a plan B, then you shouldn't have that plan A. And in, in life, that doesn't go for yeah. everything. It doesn't fit everything. I mean, you should always be prepared. And uh, being an Eagle Scout, it, I have to say that. But, you know. <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> I didn't know that about you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and so, um, you know, in, in, in your passion, if you're going to pursue a dream, you got to go all out. Yeah. You, you just have to, I mean, be it as it may, maybe you're going to hit the ground and smash, but it, it, that's what it's going to take for you to make it. So. And there's, it, there's a, it sounds easy when you say it like that, but there's a tiny <laughs> percentage of people that even do that. Oh, yeah. And, so, and it, it sounds easy, but yeah. I mean, most people thinking of this are like, oh, there's no, 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 no. Like, I, I couldn't do that. I mean, it sounds... It sounds like to us it was easy. Right. I would guess they're thinking. Right. But I mean, I mean, you've you've got people you got to take care of. You've got, and and for me, I have a son, and and I I had to do the exact same thing. You know, you have to. Absolutely. You got just got to be all in. So, you're one of the strongest men in the world. And but, but I was thinking about this today. So, but there's a lot of big dudes, a lot, millions probably mm -hmm. in the world. Seven billion. There's probably a million really big guys. Right. What so six over six eight and three four hundred pounds? Yeah, right. Six six seven and a half through uh, three ninety five right now. So you're like right on. <laughs> and a lot of them are really strong. Right. But to to compete at your level and win, or even qualify at a pro level, there is a switch you got to flip. And mm. and I'm interested to hearing from you how you flip that switch because. It's not about it, at a certain level. You got to eat so many calories. You got to train. You got to train hard. You got to have funding. You you, you got to have the genetics. Right. But that just gets you in the door. So then, where do you flip that switch to become the guy that wins? Well, for for me specifically, it just comes from the way I was raised and the environment I was around. I, I my dad worked sixteen hour days, busted his ass, and we never had any money. And my mom, she just always made me feel like I could do anything, you know. And yeah. I, I had a really good mom who. I, I was I was a chubby kid who should have been you know very uh, self conscious, but I wasn't. My my mom told me I could be anything, and I just believed her. And I knew yeah. when she said it that she meant it. So, in in my heart, I knew that I could do whatever I wanted. And growing up, we we were just extremely poor. Like in in high school, for most of it, I didn't have any electricity, and we had ten people in a three bedroom house, no electricity. And I I saw the way that that we were all. You're not really suffering when you're a kid. When when you got brothers and sisters and you can play outside and, and, and all that, you don't feel like I'm suffering. But right. I knew that there was more to life. I knew that, that I wanted my son to, to not have that, like, that pit in their stomach worried about, you know, what are we going to do tomorrow or or how if we get kicked out of the house again, what's going to happen, all that kind of stuff. And, and for me... That's where the switch came from. The switch came from the faith that I knew I could do it, yeah. but also the fire that knew I had to do it. Dude, mm. So good. Yeah. Your uh, siblings, are they as big as you? No, actually, it, I'm, I'm the big one. It's, it's, How uh, did that happen? I don't know, man. It took eight kids, and on the eighth one, it was, it was the giant. So. <laughs> You're the youngest. Uh, no, I'm the, uh, there's two younger than me. So there's ten yeah, of us. Those, I'm number eight. Oh, and ten. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I just came out huge. And, and I don't know. It, it was weird because um, my mom and my dad aren't, aren't big. My dad's got like a barrel chest, but he's not very big. But if you look at my dad's dad and my mom's dad, right. they're huge. My dad 
dad's dad is just this big German dude who like ran a farm his whole life, and he looks like he ran a farm his whole life. Yeah. And then my mom's dad was like six eight, just this giant. He used to run horses and stuff, and so I, I think. It skipped a generation, and okay. then it skipped eight uh, seven siblings okay. right from me, and I just got it all. Yeah, so, you did. I, uh, so, all right, so the switch, right? So the, is there this moment when, like, what is it, log press? Yeah. Right? So you got the fans yelling at you, your adrenaline's pumping, and you get it right here. Is there, a, is there a moment when it wants to come down and you go, uh-uh? Oh, well, for sure. Do you, are, are you conscious of that moment or is something else kicking in? It's, it's, if, it's unique in every situation. Um, my, favorite, my favorite memory with log press is I, would, I was in Australia and we were competing at Arnold Schwarzenegger's show. And I'm competing against my rival, Eddie Hall. And I, I'm going through... And I'm 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 beating his ass. I'm doing great. Yeah. And Arnold shows up for the end of the log press. No so way. I'm the last one on the log. I'm I'm nobody else can touch this weight. I'm the only one that's still on stage. And I get the log in my lap. And when you get it in your lap, this is kind of a a, a reset. You know, it's like it's heavy. You put it down. You're like, okay, this is a break right okay. before I go to real work. And I have it in my lap, and I look up, and I see Arnold there. And then I look over, and I see Eddie watching. I'm like, I'm going to eat this dude's lunch right now. And it was fire in my soul. Like, I'm getting goosebumps right now. Yeah. And, and that... That when you when you roll when you roll 500 pounds up your chest and you're sitting there and you're looking up at the sky and you, you're you're hoping you've got enough in you not to fold in half. There's there's not much time for you to feel like the process of can I can I is yes. it going to happen that that kind of already goes out the window before you get it up. But for me, I always have that thought before I go. I always I, I don't know what it is, but I always have this. Like, you can snap your back, you can do this, you can do that. I always have that feeling and that, that visualization in my head. And then I shake it off and I'm like, no, nah, yeah. we're going. We're going to go. And, and I think <laughs> feeling that fear and then accepting it makes me stronger. It makes me Absolutely. feel like I've got, I've got that. And, and, and once, you, once you've faced down the demons and you've stared it in the face, and you know, it's, it almost feels like there's just no way I can't do it now. Absolutely. David mm. Goggins calls it taking souls. There you go. That moment. Yeah. I'm about to take your soul. Exactly. Watch me. Yeah. And that visualization, every, every major athlete, all of them, will talk at some point about visualization. Mm. Visualizing that final effort. Yeah. That that win. Yeah. That's one of and the most exactly important what you're saying. Yeah, it's one of the most important parts of training is that we always like to we always like to quote Madden from football. They say 90 90% of it's half mental. And, and it's it's just because it sounds funny. <laughs> but the truth is <laughs> yes. is it's a big mental game. Yes. And if if you haven't seen yourself succeed over and over and over, how do you know the path you're supposed to walk to get there? Yeah. I, I I go on my my cardio sessions and I I do my weight training and every time I'm doing it I'm seeing myself win every single time. It's just in me now that that I'll I've, I'll go for a little ten minute walks and on my walks in my head I'm seeing the steps I'm taking. I'm seeing I'm seeing the people falling behind me as I creep ahead, and then I'm seeing myself at the end of that walk, even though it's just a little walk. Yeah. I'm seeing myself step up on the podium and take a trophy, you know, and 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 that has translated into real life. That's why you win, <laughs> and 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 the reason I even bring it up is because there, there might be people that think. Yeah, you could think the same thing about the NFL. I mean, when you're that big, or the right. NBA, when you're that big, it just comes natural. Right. You just lift the log up and push it over your head. Right. You know, but but the, the fact is, and what I what I was saying is, there's millions of big guys. Right. There's millions of strong guys, but there's there's a certain switch. There's a certain level that that makes you elite. Mm. It's not your, just your genetics. It's not just your size. That right. just got you in the door. Right. There's a lot of big guys that sit at home and play video games all Absolutely. day. Absolutely. And, and God all bless know. them, do your thing, you know? But you know, to, to get up on the big stage, you're going to have to pay a price for sure. Yeah. You know? 
I saw something about you today. It makes me and you have something in common. Hmm. History majors in college. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. I think it's important. you got to know your history, man. We repeat it, and you're seeing it. Yeah. It's a great example today. We repeat history if we don't learn. That's and absolutely right. That's, that's in a personal uh, personal way and, and in a big, you know, in a way for our whole country. It's it's important to know that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's absolutely right. I see uh, when people say things like, this is the most divided our country's ever been. I always think, have you seen the Civil War? War, man? Right. Do you even know about the right. Civil War? Right. Now, I'm not saying we, we can't head that direction again, but but hey, we're okay right now. Right. And making statements like that has become a thing where it's like, it's really divisive and it's really like polaristic and everyone wants to say this, this half is this way and this half is that way. And it just seems so divisive. If we all just took a minute and, and talked about the things that we get along with, the things we agree with, yeah. there's a lot more of those than the things we disagree with. It's, it's yes. way more. Man, that is the absolute truth, dude. Yeah. Absolute. I see some uh, some some of your scars. Yeah. Surgery, yeah. Bi bicep surgeries, huh? Yeah, that's bicep surgery. And this one, actually, uh, th that one, that scar cost me seventeen thousand dollars. Seventeen thousand dollars. It, for me to get insurance, it's I just it's almost impossible. And right. for me to have it, never it's, thought of it that way. It, it's not worth it. It's like I'm paying for surgeries all every month. So. Uh, this was straight out of pocket, and it, it's not like we make a ton in Strongman. In Strongman, the winner of World's Strongest Man gets forty thousand mm. dollars, and that's that's the big payday, forty grand. And right, it's like, right. Uh, okay, you know, it, that it, barely was your grocery bill in the, <laughs> exactly, the last month, right? <laughs> exactly. And so for for us, we're we're professional strongmen, but we're entertainers. We don't yeah. we don't get money from lifting weights. We get money from being entertaining, from having following, and and showing other people people how to do that that's literally i'm i i stopped calling myself a professional strongman i'm i am an entertainer now <laughs> well okay so so what are you doing right now entertainment wise because dude you got a new youtube channel yeah. it's just flying right now well, i'm cracking on youtube we're we're doing videos we're making stuff and uh, that I, I feel silly that it took me so long to get going on it but yeah it, you gotta have a good camera guy and everything you can't have crap content going up because then yeah it's no good for anybody so i've got that going and i i just started uh, a new nonprofit called little monsters and it's where i grew up um, like I said, it, we, we didn't have much and I fell in love with the gym because instead of getting in trouble and messing around, I would go to the YMCA and at the YMCA, I met people that showed me like, you know, there's a way to, to get all that out of you, to feel better, to exercise and, and to just feel like you have a community. And, yeah. and then when I went to high school, I, I missed, uh, my first two years of college. I didn't, I was a second team all American, first all state in California, which is a big deal. Really and big deal. I didn't know you had to take SATs to go to college. Mm. No, nobody in my family was around. I didn't know. So I, I fell through the cracks. And right now, my goal is to make sure I can sew up those cracks as much as possible for the kids in my community and help them. Free, free training is just the beginning. I want, I want them to understand that, you know, everyone tells you, you got to go to school, you got to get your grades, but nobody explains to you that getting a 2.5 and getting an 850 on your SATs means you can go anywhere yep. and, and you can, if you want to play sports, there's, there's NAIA division three, division two, that will happily pay for some, if not all of your schooling. There's schools out there begging for kids and there's yep. kids that are ending up not having any type of education because they didn't even know about it i hear you bro so that, that's a, right. that's my biggest transition right now and just get to get little monsters going and and hopefully you know we'll we'll get through this uh lockdown period yeah and uh we'll be able to get going on that and what's the website for little monsters right now the the website's just the american .com and little monsters doesn't have its own official website yet we just got done with the paperwork and then it got it got logged back like crazy because i it was right right when the when the pandemic had started we had we had started pushing for it and then it going through the government right now is just oh it's, it's really hard they're, they're they're busy <laughs> i hear you and then youtube is american monster yep right? american monster productions yeah. american monster productions what about uh, Hollywood? They come knocking on the door yet? We've we've done a few things. I actually just yesterday got offered a commercial uh, for some stuff, and I've I I chased a lot of that for a while, and uh, it, it feels just. 
I, I moved to LA and I was living in LA trying to work and it just felt like it stole my soul. Like oh, when you I go imagine, out there dude. and you, you're going to like audition after audition and you're trying to please these people who are like, Ugh. so I separated yeah. myself from that. And since I've separated myself, more people have come knocking actually. So we've, we've, We've got a possible commercial coming up in the next couple of weeks, and then I've got a TV show in that we're supposed to film in Georgia. They want me to spend a month out in Georgia doing this big show that I'm I'm not supposed to say what it's called right now, but it's it looks pretty cool, and we'll see. You know, I'm 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 much more inclined to do stuff on my own yeah. instead of working. I think for, that's the right way, man. Make them come to you, build this YouTube channel, and your channel is is multifaceted you know you, right. there's there's some just sit down serious talking there's funny stuff yeah and so it i think that's the right thing to do i could see you personally i could see you one day in some medieval movie with a massive axe and yeah you know? that's, that's the most common thought and I, <laughs> my my goal I, I don't really have any dreams of being like big hollywood any of this stuff but my goal is to just have one epic death scene. Absolutely. Like, I just want the most gnarly, like, warrior death scene where I can have, like, a five-second clip yeah. that I'll keep forever, you know? The that's what I want. The problem in Hollywood is the guys like you are usually the guys that get killed by the little guy that's the right. hero of the show. <laughs> as long as it's epic, man. Run okay. me over with okay. a tractor or put run me through with a sword. Just make it good. Dude, uh, I appreciate you getting on here. Me and you are about to go film some stuff here at the Yee Farm. Yo, buddy. And uh, I hope we get to do this again one day. Anytime, brother. Awesome, bro. Thank you.